Mm -hmm. This is how my um, film in my new homeschool curriculum is going. Now I'm eating. It's like this video may never get filmed. My homeschool stuff for the 2019-2020 homeschool year has been rolling in for about a month. I also have some Misfit Market boxes and some other things, other videos, other videos we're gonna do here. From these boxes, I'm down. The rest of this table, that's all a whole lot, a lot of homeschool stuff. Super excited. I'm gonna tell you about the new curriculum we're giving a try this year. I'm not married to it. As I always say, I'm not married to anything but Travis, but I'm excited. I wanted to give it a try. A big part of this video might be me eating wraps and drinking a big cup of Pioneer Woman sized coffee. So we've been homeschooling, rolling into our 14th, 15th year. Our oldest kiddo is an adult. He's launched, he's independent. He's running his own business. He's living on his own. He's fully supporting himself doing all those awesome things that you'd want your grown son to do. Now our kiddos at home are, let's see, I guess I can do ages. Benjamin's two, so he's gonna be the two-year-old running around and all the moms know how that goes. Daniel is four, actually four and a half. He'll be five in December. So because he lives in a house where everybody's doing school, I just ordered him his math book, got him some fun stuff, and he's gonna do some school with us too. We have Amelia, she is six and a half. Liam is eight and a half. Then we have Gabriel, he's a new 10. We have Naomi, she's 12, but she's this close, this close to 13, solid five eight working her way to six foot. My husband's six foot six, kids get tall. And then we have Zion who is a new 16. So we are homeschooling kindergarten through 11th-ish grade, six kiddos with a two-year-old run around for extra fun. I have some things for Benjamin and he'll, he'll sit and you know, do some school too. And he'll also do a whole lot of playing. So, See all this? See these bookshelves behind us? This right here, friends, is my favorite way to homeschool all of these beautiful books. So even though what I'm going to pull out and unveil here in a moment doesn't look like a big stack of books, please know that I am inserting a big stack of books into everything and anything we do. Gonna jump in, big unveiling. Okay, so this video is not sponsored by Master Books, but Master Books has a whole lot of stuff going on that I really like. And uh, I ordered like the whole Master Books catalog, <laughs> pretty much I feel like. When I got looking at Master Books this year, I've, I've seen this, like this particular book cover flying around Instagram and stuff for the past year. And then I heard one homeschool mom talk about how it was open and go. And I'm like, open and go? I mean, to me, that sounds like you open the book and you go can't be that simple. I've used a lot of things and all of them have been wonderful in different ways. So when I saw that Master Books now has this whole open and go thing going on, I was like, I, I wanna see what that's like. This will be for Liam in particular. This is called Math Lessons for a Living Education, level three. Here we go, lesson 26. We've got the lesson on this page. Next page. Exercise one, exercise two, there you go. This is day 126, day 127. I hear the questions like, how's this different from any other workbook curriculum? I've used workbook curriculum. It was pretty dry. We did not last long in it. I really, really tried. And I was a newer homeschool mom that's honestly the first homeschool curriculum I had ever thought of. I see lots of people use and they love it. it, just wasn't for us. The reason I think that we will enjoy at least giving this curriculum a try is that it's all faith-based. This is a Bible-based curriculum. I'm seeing a, a sentence in the next story, but we have to trust God because he sees the whole picture. He does love us and also wants what's best for us. There are so many times that we don't understand it, but if we trust him, he will work it out for our good. So that's the story in the math curriculum. I really like it. And there's a Master Books mom group on Facebook. Those moms have all kinds of different little tricks and things that they do. Some of the moms, especially if they're traveling a lot or they take their school to the park or whatever, they actually take the pages out. You can see where it's perforated there. They take them out each week for each subject and have an organized workbook for their kiddo. That is not my plan. I think that that's fantastic. What I'm going to do is, you may have seen this in 
a recent haul video I did, but I got these book bins. I got one for every kiddo. So they're, they are gonna have their name on their bin. And here's a sample of how Mr. Liam's bin is shaping up and they're just gonna have their books in there. I've got math and then we have language lessons for a living education. I got this in the various levels, but again, we are open and go. We have a whole story of God's plan, Bible verses to go with it. Then we have some sentences, some questions for narration practice and addresses and helpful, helpful verb usage. This is Amelia's math book. She was putting bookmarks in it. She is so excited. So you see you got the little piggy on the cover, but then some of the math problems in here was so cute. Look at that. You got the mama dog with her puppies and the mama pig with her little piglets. So with Daniel's for kindergarten, I ordered his and I should have his in September. There's some little sheep. And I read the stories and she and she will do the math. There's another little another little piggy. So cute. So in this box, this 101 favorite stories from the Bible book goes with the older kiddos language arts curriculum. I also got a whole bunch of these answers for kids books. There is the teacher's guide and the student books for some apologetics curriculum within the boxes we shall get there right here these are the okay so this is the other thing that i like that i think i'm gonna like again remember i'm talking about a curriculum i haven't used yet but i'm super positive because i dropped a lot of homeschool mom budget cash on uh, on, on ordering all this stuff i do always enjoy though the answers curriculum and books and so I just thought that this would be excellent diving into for the kids and for their mama here. Okay, we have illustrated family Bible stories and then we have elementary Bible and English grammar. This is for the upper elementary grades. Now, we have Adam's map of history and I understand it's gonna totally depend on your view of creation and world history and timeline stuff but in this box and I can't even it is this massive massive chart one of the reasons why we have not opened all this up is because we weren't ready to start school yet and I did not want kids tearing through it Adam's chart map of history classic timeline of world history a study of ancient modern and biblical history and so we're gonna open it up and it is that. It is an absolute massive timeline. It says it is 23 feet long and it's in this book. And I know we're going to love opening this up, but it's gonna, it's staying in the plastic. I'm not even opening it for you guys yet. It's gotta stay in that plastic there. This is probably four boxes of books from Master Books here. We're gonna get into Amazon and stuff I've picked up at Walmart. Just stick with me, stick with me. I have a nice collection. I do pass things on as well. So when I show you this, okay, this is their Foundations of Phonics curriculum. I have all about spelling and I have all about reading and I love those curriculums too. I will post a link down in the description below where you can get some freebies from All About Spelling, All About Reading. I think they're called All About Learning Press. That's their umbrella. Anyway, I also liked the way that this foundations phonics looked and I thought you know what Daniel mama can test some things out on you let's just try this and see if we like it and it's also consumable again open and go every lesson I really like that what lesson are we on today okay week 10 lesson 29 K is for King King David followed God and we've got the K and we've got the lesson and he's got some drawing there to go along with the letter K more reading and lesson activities daniel's four and a half this is going to be real light and gentle no pressure from this mama also uh, in my daniel stack here i've got this is a dinosaur fun book and it's dry erase marker do dinosaurs take baths it's just dinosaurs and dry erase and i've got lots of dinosaur loving boys here so i thought that would be something special for him for his early kindergarten time this is their principles of mathematics 
right here we've got book one and then we have again teacher's guide that's the only thing that confuses my brain a little bit because it's really the student workbook from my understanding but there you go kid open up your student workbook have your math and then here is the um curriculum that goes along with it it was written by Catherine Loop. I believe you say her last name Hannon now, but I've met Catherine a few times and she's wonderful with math. I actually worked with her online some, so it's fun to have some math curriculum written by Catherine. Yay. For history. Now, I love to do history heavily through read alouds. We are still going to do history through read-alouds. What I have done for years, and you can see this if you go back to like five years, the beginning of my YouTube videos, I recently had this realization that, wow, I've had a whole lot of little kids. And what I mean by that, you don't always know the season you're in, mamas, when you're in it. But now I'm in a season where I only have one toddler. Everyone else is gonna be doing school. For many years, the way I adapted our homeschooling is I would get my two big boys, Jaden and Zion, and of course we know Jaden's now an adult, I would get them going in their schoolwork, right? I would take my whole posse of four to five younger kids, I would exercise them heavily. <laughs> big nature walks, big trampoline time, big play time. When you have a lot of little kids and then you're gonna sit down and try to do school with them, I could never figure out how to do that without making sure everyone got a whole lot of exercise first. We've actually transitioned to where it may be a quick like 30 minute get outside nature hike and then school time, get heavy school done first. And then we have more free time in the afternoon. So it's not really that big of a deal anyway, just a different season. Okay, so this is our American History, American History One. They have on here third through sixth grade. You can adapt it and scooch it to cover more of your grades, however you need to do that. This is uh, my book that I will be reading, whoops, excuse me, reading to them. And I'm sure I will match more read alouds to it. And then these are the student workbooks. So for the kids who will be doing this, they have their own workbooks. Heroes of the Abolition Movement. As an author, Frederick Douglass will need a book cover. Sketch Frederick Douglass for the cover of a book. So they would do that here. This is uh, day 149. It says Frederick Douglass became a famous author. He fought for women's rights and was an abolitionist. As a child, he was a slave. At the time, there were strict laws making it illegal for slaves to learn to read. Why? And then the children who are on this level will write about why was it illegal to teach a child who was a slave to read. Very hard topics, topics that we obviously need to all discuss and learn from. And then it says Frederick Douglass was very famous in his lifetime and is still very famous. Why do you think he is well known? And so then the child will write about that. There's a map of Texas there, yep. We'll be able to do lots of great reading. Uh, here's uh, my book of prayers for my country. Looks like that's, oh, that's nice in the back there. Okay, so with the science, I got a little confused here. Their kid books, uh, well, here's the individual test and quizzes. Science starters, elementary, physical, and earth science. I just wanted to, it's the, um, the earth, its, stru its structure and its changes and forces and motion from high speed jets to wind up toys. Yeah, so we have, we have worksheets and this is the teacher's guide and student journal and we have different books and observations and things that we will write. And then here's for the forces and motion. All right, so now this is older kids stuff, world literature. Okay, and then we have the teacher's guide, which has uh, objectives, daily concept builders, weekly essay, and test. And so, yeah, lots of world literature stuff going down in here. So when I was looking at the Jensen's grammar, which each level 
counts as a high school English level. Just all looked so interesting and I had Zion look at it with me and I just decided to get all of it. It looked like good materials to add to my collection. So this is the Jensen's Grammar DVD supplement and there's the format writing. And so what's nice is it gives you in every book, no matter the subject, it'll say like this particular grammar is approximately 30 to 45 minutes per lesson. Benjamin has now waken up. He is talking to me five days a week. Um, it is designed for grades 9 through 12 in a one-year course. So it's pretty much like that for each of these. It's in-depth courses on these topics, and I wanted to have them available for different kiddos as they need them. And then we also have some more science books. The Ocean book. We have Astronomy. We have Weather and we have mineral and for this we have the teacher's guide seventh through 12th grade depending on what grade you are using it with so with the master books there's still a few things i put my last little order in the other day that would mean i've put a total of four orders in so i have a few more things coming for naomi um, that aren't here but besides that this is what I've ordered for homeschool and six kids for this year. Plus, like I say, some of these are to have on hand and I will have kids that move on up in them. Ah, important stuff, important stuff here. So, my kids love stencils and slowly over time our stencils have dissipated. <laughs> so I went on Amazon and I've ordered a lot of stencils. I'll open one pack, but I ordered packs of like 50 or so, but I ordered them from different companies and I ordered many different types. So you see they're simple, but my kiddos will use stencils for hours. I'm still showing you, I guess you had to, I've just chatted and showing you these. You see these, even more stencils. Jamerell, you got a lot of stencils, okay. I proved my point. I bought the little bit more expensive dry erase books. I thought we might get a couple years out of these. And so these are for Daniel and Amelia. Now Amelia is going to, I mean, she's got, she has the fine motor skills to write these letters and words. Daniel, it's going to be a stretch, but that's okay. He can still see the letters and work on tracing and it can look like a, a scribble. And at four and a half, I'm totally fine with that. And then here was the second one. And really I was just looking for, bo for books that had letters and numbers and basic tracing. So this book actually says three plus on it, but I think it's also fine for a six year old to be writing in this. It's no big deal. So last year I bought three tape dispensers. You see the state, like we've lost the little insert. So I bought a big thing of tape refills. I'll show you what this looks like. Again, this is all from my Amazon box. I think I've got four, four of these in here. I think it was 36 rolls of tape. And then I bought three more tape dispensers. Now, something else I ordered, and I'm not to the box yet, I think it came in a separate package and I didn't open it yet, is I bought more of these little cassettes that go in here that the tape goes on, so that maybe, just maybe we'll end up, I think I bought a 12 pack of them, they were like three or four dollars. We will dig them out, so that maybe we want, maybe we'll have five rolls of tape. It could happen. And then we'd have the little replacements, and we just have like, have what, have what we need. Wouldn't that be amazing? Okay, so let's see what's in this one. More stencils, yes. Now these are smaller, but they're a thicker quality plastic. A dozen plastic dinosaur stencils. Tape dispenser replacement. This is what I was talking about. It's called a core, not a cassette. Okay, just right there. Our whole life has changed by this. It's gonna be amazing. This looks like it's more stencils. Let's see here, 18 piece, but this one came in this nice little pack here. This is everything that was in here. We got some smaller ones. Lots going on with that. So, 
filling up our stencil basket. Okay, okay, j -Row. Also, some other random things that I picked up were another pack of just Expo markers. Never have too many of those. And then another new fresh thing that I got is the Organized Homeschool Planner. Now this is made by my friend Kim. Her site is notconsumed.com. She is awesome. Kim just did a fantastic homeschool pl planning teaching. I will put a link to it down below. She taught moms how to plan their entire homeschool year in just a few days of working with her through her teachings. Haven't done any of her teaching videos yet, but I know they're available because I talked to her about them. Honestly, I... I'm probably just gonna have to jump in. But this thing is beautiful and it's unlike any other homeschool planner. So I'm gonna flip through. I love that it's got Bible verses all through it. That's very nice. When I'm looking at this planner, my first impressions are this is pretty creative and I like that. Similar to Bible journaling, only homeschool mom journaling. So we have here, look at this graphic. You got the graphic of the house and then she has a plan on building your homeschool. She's got thoughts for the attic. It says the attic is the top level of your home. Don't think of it as a dusty old place to store stuff. It's a vibrant hub of information, connections, memories, and education. In this section of the house, list the things you're putting into your attic. What subjects are most important to teach? She's got information on the windows. The windows are special things that define our family. Then we have building blocks, which are values, and we have the foundation. So this looks like a wonderful exercise to do as a mama. We can go through each child and evaluate them for last year. And then we're talking about each child, what they need, what their strengths are, what their weaknesses are, what their educational needs are. What will we teach? We've got early elementary, late middle school, high school. We've We've got the annual plan. So some states you required so many days, what days of the week we will teach. So you can do it where you do 10 weeks of school, take two weeks off. You can do eight weeks of school, take one week off. I think we're gonna do six weeks on, one week off, pretty much for the whole year. That will mean that we'll get about eight weeks off sprinkled throughout, and then we'll have another eight weeks to sprinkle throughout the year as we need it. So of course that's given us our 16 weeks full of breaks, but we're taking them as we want and need them, not at the majority at one time, which just works well for us. Annual plan, got our curriculum plan. So then she does talk a lot about training children to work for independence. And she has a lot of good resources for that. Thanksgiving and praises, a look at this month, what we're grateful for, what worked well, what God revealed to me, something I'm covering in prayer, what I might change, what I need to say no to, how I saw God working this month. Wonderful at a glance look at the month. This month's memories, I always love that. I feel like this particular homeschool planner can work for a lot of styles. I also ordered a Bible journaling Bible. It's not here yet, I was hoping to show it to you guys. I ordered it on Instagram. Let me see what her name is. The Salty Biscuit, that's what it's called, The Salty Biscuit. She's got an interesting story on why their Etsy shop is called that, but they do custom journaling Bibles. I'm picturing myself in the morning here in my rocking chair, and I've read my Bible, and I've read some of my Richard Wombrand or whatever book that I'm reading, and I'm doing some in my Bible journal, and then I pick up this organized homeschool planner, and I'm doing some notes and thoughts in it. I'm picturing that as being part of my morning time, so that's exciting.